Hey everyone, it's Lisa. Welcome back to my channel. So we are full into back to school season. I admit by the time I get this video up, we might be a little bit late to the game, but I went ahead and engraved these cute pencils. So this is using uh, fonts from Design Bundles and I also used a jig to figure out how to place these on here. So when I go through this video, I'm using a lot of techniques that I've learned from other Facebook groups that I'm in. I just want to emphasize there's nothing like groundbreaking about this video. It's just something a lot of Glowforge users do. And I wanted to try it and show you how I did it. So a lot of fun. I did this in a Facebook Live video earlier this week and I decided to do a full on tutorial for it. So if you like this video or if you're excited to learn about it, just go ahead and hit the like button now. If you're watching and you haven't subscribed, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any more uploads. And I have a link in my description. You can save up to $500 on a new Glowforge machine. So let's go ahead and work on these pencils. All right, so I'm here in Silhouette Studio now just to emphasize if I haven't already, um, pencil engraving is not like a revolutionary thing that I started. I don't have a foothold on it. It's something that a lot of us who use Glowforge enjoy doing. Um, and so I wanted to do it and show you how I did it. So um, I am going to be referencing like a file that I got from the Glowforge user group. And I'm also going to be using a similar method to someone in the group. So I'm so sorry, I couldn't remember who it was. I watched this video a while ago, but we're just gonna go through. So I'm using the good Ticonderoga pencils. And so for our jig, we want a spot. Let me just go down to one of these so I can show you the process. We want a rectangle to be 0 0.290 inches tall and about seven and three quarters inch wide. Now, when I, bring this in, when I put the pencils in there, there's actually a little bit of space on the side here, but it's totally fine. So now we're gonna go through and I'm doing a total of six pencils. So I'm going to make five copies of this box. And the way that I do that is I like to put my mouse over my box. You'll see that my mouse is a hand. So that means I have something that I'm about to select. Hold down the Alt button and the mouse will change to a plus sign. So I'm gonna hold down Alt, click, drag, bring that down, hold down Alt, click, drag, and repeat that until I have six, four, five, six. So now I want to re-space these and align them. So I'm gonna grab all of these right here, just like this. And I'm gonna to go to the quick access toolbar up at the top. I'm going to re-space by hitting this button to space vertically. And then I'm going to hit this button right here to center align them. So now I have the base of my guides done. Now the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to set up my text. So we're going to do um, a couple different versions. So I'm gonna show you the text, but I'm actually only going to engrave one style. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go right here and we're gonna type our name. So we're gonna do Cam Rulo. And so this I'm gonna do in a font called Brayden. So I'm going to click on it and do Brayden. So it's a nice, like simple font. You know, it's, it's like classic and modern. And before I do that, <laughs> I do remember what I forgot I was going to do. I need to set up my guide for lining up my text. So the way that I'm going to do that, and I saw someone in the Glowforge user group do this, is that we use the grid as a, as a measuring way, measuring guide for an inch. So the way that I do that is I'm gonna go up to the top right, go to my page panel, and then right here in the middle is our grid settings, and we're going to show grid. So now I'm gonna take my lines and I'm going to line them right on this line right here. So each one of these lines indicates one inch. So I want my uh, name to be one inch from the eraser from the end. So I'm going to go over to the left side to the line tools and literally draw a line right on this next one. So hold down shift, click drag, and check it out. Now we have our line and that's our guide. So let's turn off show grid. So now we know that's where we're going to place it. So let's go over here. I'm going to make a copy, click and drag just like before. And then this one will be for Olivia Brooks. 
Okay, so we have that set right there. And so now I'm going to make a copy of both of these so I have their names typed. Olivia Brooks, Cameron Lowe, and we're going to choose a different font. So in this video, we are going to engrave one name, and then we're also going to use a single line font so that we can score. So the great thing about single line fonts is they're typically used for things like foil quill, but when we use our Glowforge, we can do a quick score, and so it drastically cuts our production time down. So let's go over here to our text tool, and it's called Dear Agatha and I will link it in the description for you. So there are a couple different versions. We're gonna do Dear Agatha Sands, see? So cute. And then we'll change this too, to that as well. And I want to say too, they're also, actually for Olivia, I'll do it as well. So Cam's going to have um, two engraved ones and um, one, I mean two scored ones, I'm sorry, and one engraved one right here. Olivia, we're gonna go ahead and do a script version as well. So Dear Agatha has a script and a sans version, which is awesome. So we're gonna go right here, and we can have it right like that. So now you can see we have our name right there. Let's go ahead and capitalize. So we have our name right there. Oh, look at that name. Let's get that out of here. There we go. So now we're going to do some resizing so it fits into our template in the correct spot for our pencils. All right, so if you look over here and you'll see this particularly with this script font, um, the dimensions of our design are showing up right here. So it's saying it's three and a half inches wide and just under an inch tall. But if you look, our words are not actually that large. That is pulling in the dimensions of our text box. So what we need to do is we need to convert this from a text to an object. Now with a single line script font, this be can become tricky because this doesn't actually have closed lines in here. So if we were to do what we typically do for script fonts and weld, we get like, we get a mess. So we don't want that, I'm just hitting Control Z. So instead, we are going to tell the software, hey, change this from text to just like lines, you know, just objects. And so we do that by right clicking and convert to path. So the term for a line in Silhouette Studio is path, so you just convert to path. So I'm going to very quickly grab the rest of these, right click, convert to path. So now you can see they're all individual items and you're all set to go. So now we just need to resize these. I'm going to click on the names here. Make sure your ratio, aspect ratio is locked here. And I'm gonna set these to 0.119 inches tall. All right, so we're gonna do that for these three except for the script. We're gonna make the script a little bit larger. Oops. Oh, I hit it, just kidding, <laughs> 0.119. I was wondering why that looked weird, but I set the width. That's what happens when I get distracted and I'm talking to you all. All right, so 0.119. Okay, so now let me resize this and show you a comparison. When we bring this over, it will look, it will be the same height technically, but this name looks a lot smaller because of how the script font works. It doesn't take that whole space. So this one we're gonna make a little bit larger. I don't recommend this with all your other designs because it will go past the edges of that little flat area. But for the script, it works out a little bit better that, at, works out a little bit better that we do this. So I'm just gonna stretch this a little bit more and I'm going to set it to be about 0.143 or 0.145 inches tall. All right, so I hit this button in the top here to view my whole workspace. So now I'm gonna drag this over and these handy grids make it super easy. You can see this line went in the middle here to indicate the name is in the middle and then it lined with this line here. So I don't even need to zoom in, which is nice because I can grab all of these words, super, these names super easily 
So I'm just bringing it over to the side there. All right, so we're gonna bring this over here. And let's zoom in on this one so we can uh, real, really align it. Okay, so here's the name. I'm gonna click until I get the name. Single line fonts are hard because they're so small. It's hard to figure out if you have the name or not. So there's the middle, there's the top. And that will be in the middle. I'm gonna nudge it up one because of the script. Okay, so we have, oh yeah, and Cam's gonna get two of these. So I'm just gonna make my copy, click and drag. There we are in the middle. And now we lined it up there. So check it out. You can see all of that's in the middle. Let's just check it one more time. I'm gonna grab both of these. Align tools right there in the middle. So you can see it's not really moving, but if this makes you feel better, you can do this. But don't do it with the script. Your script's gonna be a little bit off just because of how it's set up. Cool. So now I'm happy with this. Let me just check that one. That one looks off. It was a little bit. All right, so now I'm happy with this. The next thing that we're going to do is we're gonna set this up for our, our engrave and our um, score. So we want score and engrave to have different line colors in, so, in Silhouette Studio. So I'm gonna keep all of my score as red line color and I'm gonna grab this name, hold down shift. Not, sh I was holding down alt, sorry, shift. And then we're gonna go to the top right here to line color and make this whatever different line color, purple. So we want to have a couple different line colors. We want one for our squares, one for our score, and one for our engrave. Now I'm not gonna export this line with me. This is just gonna stay in here. This is a great time to maybe save this file so you can work with it later. And if you are making a reusable jig, then you also want to draw a square around this entire thing. Now me personally, I like to do a new cardboard jig every time because I don't trust myself to put my jig in the same place when I do another round. So for me, it's easier for me to do cardboard for that round of pencils that I'm doing. All right, so I'm going to grab all of this right here, grab my names, and I'm not getting that line right there. I'm leaving that out. So we'll go to file, save selection and save the hard drive. So this will grab just what you have selected. So go to hard drive, choose your folder and set it as an SVG. All right, so here I am. So you can see this is from my Facebook Live. I'm just going to create, upload from file and choose my design. So we're gonna let this process. I have already put in a piece of cardboard. We're just gonna move on from that point and I have it pinned down into my machine so it's not going to move. So I'm going to bring this over here, kind of set a spot to begin with. I want to maximize this piece so I'm gonna put it towards the edge. So let's set this to cardboard, eighth inch corrugated cardboard. I'm actually gonna take my design and move it just a little bit over just to be safe. All right, so now the first thing that we're going to do is we are going to cut our template. This is where we place our pencils. So what's most important is that you hit ignore for your names. We don't want that to go. And then you can choose cut. So if you can use the proof grade setting for cardboard, I like to use one that I programmed on my own before these were even put in the Glowforge. And so that would be a speed of 180 and 90 power. So now we're gonna do our first one and hit print. So this is gonna be basic cardboard, just going through. So I'll see you in a couple minutes as we set up the next part of our design. All right, so here we are. So the first thing I'm gonna do before I forget anything else, is I'm gonna hit my squares and ignore it. Now this is the important part. Normally, in every video I do, you'll see me set my focus. It's very important that you do not set your focus for this. We are going to manually put it in. And because we have not moved our jig, we don't have to worry about the alignment. That's why we make the jig, to help with the alignment. So we're gonna go to this top one. 
We're gonna do engrave, and then I saved a setting in heel, in heel. In here, it's pencil engraving. I'm doing it at a speed of 500, precision power 25, 270 lines per inch, but this is important. You need to change this over to manual focus height and set it to 0.27 inches. Um, that's what I saw the consensus in different groups of what people do, are doing their pencils at. So that is what I'm doing mine at. If you're using a jig for something else, you basically use calipers to measure. So now we have our score. So we have, again, this is something I programmed, but it's almost the same thing. It's only uh, 20 power instead of uh, 25. So now we have this in here. So let's go over to print. And this is going to find our placement. It's gonna go off the same alignment that we had before. And then we're going to cut, and not a cut, then we're going to engrave and score. All right, everyone, here are my finished pencils. I think they look really cute. Sorry about the focus. So this is using a combination of fonts. This is Brayden for the engraved font and then Dear Agatha for the scored fonts. Those are the single line ones. I've linked them all in the description. I really enjoy using them. So you can follow this tutorial or the Facebook Live or the YouTube Live that I did a while ago. That will be in the live video tab of my channel. So I'm really excited about it. I hope this does well for you for back to school. I know it's a little late in the game, but you know, you could be watching this in 2022 and, and later. So super helpful. I really, really like it. So if you like this video, please hit the like button. It really does help my channel. If you like this video, please subscribe so you don't miss any more uploads. And don't forget there is a link in the description for you to save up to $500 on a new machine. And as of filming now, they have increased the ship times. So if you buy a pro, you can get it in seven days. So super exciting. Let me know in the comments if you've done this project or what other projects you would like to see.